Bye-bye. 
Give him a 
Wherever you are this hour, just lift up your voice. Give him all the glory. That song says, thank you, O oh God, because you have never, ever forsaken the work of your hands. You have never forgotten the work of your hands. Just worship him wherever you are this afternoon. Ascribe all glory, all praise, all honor, all adoration to this awesome God. Exalt him. Lift him up this hour. Thank him because he is good and because his mercy is for and Dios forever. He is the ancient of days. He is the one that abided of old. He is the one that rides upon the wings of the wind by his name, Jah. He is the creator, the ends of the, of the ends of the earth. He is the almighty God, the all-sufficient God. Just lift up your voice and worship him this hour. Let him hear your voice of gratitude. Let him hear your voice of worship. Let him hear your voice of adoration. Let him hear your voice of gratitude this hour. Thank him for life. Thank you for sustenance. Thank you for protection. Thank you for provision. Thank you for your going out. Thank you for, for your coming in. Wherever you are listening to us this afternoon, across the nations of the earth, on every platform right now, lift up your voice and just say, Father, thank you. Where would we be without you? What would be our story today if it had not been for you? Lord God of heaven, we say thank you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor that we have not been swept away by the wave of this pandemic. Oh, we have not been giving us a prey to the teeth of the enemy. Our soul, our life, our destinies have escaped, even as a bird out of the snare of the fowler. The snare has been broken and we are escaped because our help is in the name of the Lord. Lift up your voice and thank him this hour. Give him glory, give him praise. Honor him, adore him for the victory that he has given you and I. For the testimonies he has given you and I. For the deliverances. Thank him for the many escapes. Thank him for supplies. Even in the midst of this pandemic. Say, Father, thank you. I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you all adoration, O God. Thank you, mighty Father. Blessed, blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name we have worshipped. Oh, Lord, my God. When I in awesome wonder, just in our attitude of worship, just worship it right now.
is our confession today that you are exalted above our fears above our anxieties above our worries our concerns above the happenings globally above this crisis you are exalted above the uncertainties of this time thank you father because we see you over all that is over this nation and the nations of the earth Thank you, because at the end of the day, it will end in your praise. This is our confession today. Bless your children. Every one of them watching from all over the world, via any of these platforms. Father, I ask that this hour of the Holy Ghost hour, show up for our glory again. Show up for everyone's testimony. Bless somebody this afternoon. Heal somebody this afternoon. Transform somebody's life this afternoon. And open doors for somebody this afternoon. In the name of Jesus. In this month of our will arise. Father, let somebody's level be shifted higher. In the mighty name of Jesus. At the end of the day, we promise that all the glory will return to you. Thank you, our Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Quickly, I want you to please open your Bibles with me to the book of Job chapter 7. We want to quickly take a word of prayer before we go into the message this afternoon. Job chapter 7. We can start reading from verse 1, but I'm going to verse 4. Job chapter 7 and reading from verse 1. It said, is there not an appointed time to man upon the earth? It said, and are not his days also like the days of an hireling? Verse 2. It said, as a servant earnestly desired the shadow... And as a hireling looketh for the reward of his work, verse 3, says, so am I, so, it says, so am I made, am I made, please take note of that, so am I made, that's not, that is not, not what I bargained for, so am I made to possess months of vanity, and worrisome nights are appointed to me, I'm coming there shortly, verse 4, says, when I lie down, I say, when shall I arise? And the night be gone, and I am full of tossings to and fro unto the dawning of the day. My emphasis is on verse 3 and verse 4. He said, when I lie down, I say, when shall I arise? And I want to ask us a question this afternoon, wherever we are. When do you want to arise? It's a big question that you must answer. And I trust that the Holy Spirit will help you answer it correctly this hour. When do you want to arise? And for you and for me, I trust God that we shall arise this time. In the mighty name of Jesus. But my emphasis is on verse 3. Look at verse 3. He said, I am made to possess months of vanity. You are going to reject that this afternoon. This pandemic has made many to possess months of vanity. Against their will, against their plans, against their programs, against the things that they had arranged for themselves. The pandemic, the wave of this pandemic has made so many to be saying this 
as their testimony. But that will not be your own Lord. You will not be made to possess months of vanity in the mighty name of Jesus. Worrisome nights will not be appointed to you this year. So wherever you are this afternoon, I want you to lift up your voice and we are going to reject that. He said, I am made to possess months of vanity. You are going to reject that over your family. You are going to reject that over your life. That in 2020, forget that March, April, May, June is gone. Forget the war that the lockdown has brought against the human race. Tell me, I want to tell you this afternoon that the hand of God is still very much available and is still very much working salvation in the midst of the earth. You will not be made to possess months of vanity in the mighty name of Jesus. So lift up your voice with me this afternoon. I want you to reject over your life. Made, I have been made. That the word there, the strongest word there is made. In other words, against my will, it's against my choice, it's against what I bargained for, it's against my program. But I was made to possess it. Lift up your voice this afternoon. That every power that wants you to possess months of vanity this year, vanity simply means emptiness. Months you can't show anything for, months you can't account for, months that there is nothing in it to put to, 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 to show out that God has done something good in your life. Lift up your voice with me this afternoon. I I say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, over my life, over my family, I reject every possession of the months of vanity in the mighty name of Jesus. I reject it. In the remaining days of this year, they shall, in the remaining months of this year, I decree there shall not be months of vanity for me. I shall not be made to possess months of vanity. This pandemic will not make me to possess months of vanity. Are you praying that prayer? In the name of Jesus, over your business, over your finances, over your career, over your academics, lift up your voice wherever you you are across the nations of the air. Open your mouth and reject that. You will not be made to possess months of emptiness. You will not be made to possess months of vanity in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I decree your, de your decree this afternoon in the name of Jesus that over my family, over my life, my career, I refuse to be made to possess months of vanity by the happenings of the world, by this pandemic, by this crisis, by this lockdown in the name of Jesus. My death in him. My life my family shall not be shall be made shall not be made uh, to possess months of vanity in the name of Jesus. In my career, I shall not be made to possess uh, months of vanity in the name of Jesus. Uh, Father, I thank you because after this lockdown, oh God, uh, I decree total recovery. I decree absolute recovery. I decree a complete and total recovery for myself and for my family. I shall not be made uh, to possess uh, months of vanity. And I pause to pray for you, wherever you are watching me from this afternoon, you will not be made to possess months of vanity in the name of Jesus, regardless of what is happening globally in the name that's above every name, I decree the hand of God will be good upon your own life in the midst of the crisis in Egypt, Goshen was well taken care of, Goshen was well sustained by the grace and the mercy of God the children of Israel never partook of all the plagues that he Egypt in that time. And that same God is still alive in the midst of this global downturn, in the midst of this global crisis. For you and for your household, you will not possess months of emptiness. You will not possess months of vanity. You will not possess months of lack. You will not possess months of shame. You will not possess months of wretchedness. You will not possess months of losses in the mighty name of Jesus. Any power, any force of hell that wants to make you to possess what God has not appointed for you. Today that power dies in the name of Jesus. Over your family, over your loved ones, over our nations, that power dies in the name of Jesus. The power of this pandemic dies now in the name of Jesus. The nations of the earth shall no more be made to possess months of vanity because of this lockdown. So shall it be. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. The second prayer is in verse 4. He said, and when I lie down, I say, when shall I arise? And my question this afternoon is, when do you want to arise? It's not enough to say, I will arise. The big question is, when do you want to arise? Because you shall have whatsoever you say. 
That's what the scripture says. Numbers 14, 28 says, as you have spoken in my ears, so will I do unto you. So it's not enough to say, I will arise. It's not enough to declare, I will arise. You must put a timeline to it. When do you want to arise? When? When? Lift up your voice. For you, I don't know, but for me, I want to arise now. Even from this lockdown, according to the word of the Lord from the mouth of my father and the Lord, my star will begin to rise, even in the darkness of this lockdown. So wherever you are this afternoon, Afternoon. I want you to lift up your voice and declare when you want to arise. And I want to advise you this afternoon, make it, make it specific. Don't just say, I want to arise. Put a timeline to it. That Lord, before the end of this month, before the month of August is over, I don't know what particular area of, or desire that you, des that you need. Ask God this afternoon. That Lord, before the end of this month, before the end of August, I want to arise financially. I want to arise materially. I want to arise spiritually. Make sure that you are specific. Don't just make, don't make it generic. Be specific. The law before the end of the month of August, before the end of the month of September, concerning that project in your hand, concerning that proposal, concerning that exam, concerning whatever it is, uh, put a timeline to it. The Lord, over this matter, I want to arise uh, before the end of this so, so, so and so time. I want to arise. Uh, I want to arise uh, and proclaim your goodness. Uh, I want to arise uh, and testify fire of your goodness before the end of the month of September 2020. Over that issue, my Father, my God, cause me to arise. Oh, cause me to arise and proclaim your faithfulness and proclaim your goodness in the name of Jesus for that family, oh God, that needs an urgent intervention. Now, oh God, please arise. Please arise. Build them out of that shame. Build them out of that embarrassment that is approaching them right now. In the name of Jesus. For that man that is on a sick bed. For that woman that is an, an, in an isolation center right now. Lord, we ask uh, that your power will locate them right now. And they will arise from that bed of languishing. They will arise from that bed of sickness. Uh, and they will begin to proclaim uh, your mercy and your grace. Uh, thank you, mighty Father. Because now we shall arise uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, they will not meet us where they left us. Uh, Thank you, awesome God. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. And finally, I want you to please open your Bibles again. Don't forget, the Holy Ghost hour is a prayer time. It's a time of prayer. It's a time of offering prayer unto the Lord because we are confident that he hears us always. Psalm 94, verse 17. Psalm 94, verse 17. Psalm 94 and verse 17. Can we all read it together? Psalm 94 and verse 17. Here is what it says. Ah, could I have it in the New King James Version? The New King James Version. Psalm 97 and verse 17. God bless you. He said, unless the Lord had been my help, he said, my soul would soon have settled in silence. I pray for you this afternoon. Your soul will not settle in silence. Oh, you didn't hear what I just said. Your soul will not settle in silence. Your life will not settle in silence. Your business, your career will not settle in silence. You know why? God will send you help. Lift up your voice this afternoon. And you are going to pray using that scripture. He said, unless the Lord had be my help, my soul would soon have what? Settled in silence. And that's what this pandemic has done to so many lives, so many destinies. So many destinies have been settled in silence. So many businesses settled in silence. So many projects settled in silence. So many proposals and programs settled in silence. And if we don't pray, the enemy wants this silence prolonged. The enemy wants this silence elongated. But you and I must resist the power of hell. Enough is enough. We are not created to be silent. We are a speaking being. We are a speaking being. We are made after the image of God. God spoke when he saw darkness and emptiness in Genesis. And things began to happen. When you speak too, things begin to happen. But the enemy doesn't want us to speak. That's why he wants to drown our soul in silence. By negative occurrences, negative statistics all over the place. Lift up your voice this afternoon. You are going to make that declaration. 
declaration over your life and your destiny that as the help of the Lord is available for you and for your family, your soul, your life, your destiny will not settle in silence. Say with me, say, Father, by your help, my soul, my life, my family, my business, my destiny will not settle in silence in the mighty name of Jesus. Are you praying that prayer? That sickness wants you to settle in silence. That sickness has come to settle you in silence. That, that, that problem has come to settle you in silence. That issue has come to settle you in silence. But you must refuse to remain silent. My people re refuse to remain silent. You put your mouth, open your mouth this afternoon and say, Lord, by your mercy, by your help, my life will not be settled in silence. In the name of my destiny will not be settled in silence. My glory will not be settled in silence. My giftings, my skills, my talents, my abilities will not be settled in silence. Every divine investment in my life will not be settled in silence. That business will not be settled in silence. That prospect will not be settled in silence. That talent will not be settled in silence. In the name of Jesus, that ministry will not be settled in silence. That calling will not be settled in silence. That career, that academic pursuit will not be settled in silence. The help of God will show up for you. The help of God will show up for me. God will send you help. God will release help. God will send help. God will minister help to you in the name of Jesus. That project in your hands will not be settled in silence. Thank you, mighty Father, because our glory shall sing this year and not be silent. Our glory shall sing and not be silent. Our glory shall sing and not be silent. Our glory shall sing and not be silent. My glory shall sing and not be silent. My own glory shall sing and not be silent. You don't know that your glory is composing a song already because God must get glory over your life. God must get glory over this nation. God must get glory over this pandemic. That's why you need to open your mouth and declare that, that your glory will sing. This year, in spite of all that has happened, lift up your voice wherever you are and say, my glory shall sing this year and not be silent. My glory shall sing songs of victory, songs of triumph uh, and not be silent. Are you praying that prayer? Are you making that declaration? Make it over your children. Make it over your family. Make it over your nation. That the glory of God over your life will sing this year in the name of Jesus. Do you know that you carry a singing glory? You carry a singing glory, brother and sister. You carry a singing glory, man of God. You carry a singing glory, my brother. Lift up your voice and release the voice of your glory right now and declare with all conviction and persuasion that as the Lord liveth, as his mercy and grace are sure, my glory will sing this year and not be silent. My glory will sing him. The glory of my children will sing. The glory of his church will sing. The glory of our nation will sing again and not be silent. Thank you mighty father. Oh glory be to your name. Your glory will sing and not be silent. In the mighty name of Jesus. The enemy will not waste your songs this year. Thank you mighty father. We bless and honor you. In Jesus precious name we have prayed. Father, thank you. Even as we have spoken in your ears, Father, please do unto us this afternoon. Send help quickly in the name of Jesus. Let no one's life, destiny, family, project, concerns be settled in silence anymore. Lord, let our glory sing this year and not be silent. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. God bless you. God bless you. Please, you may be seated. Let's open our Bibles quickly to the book of Micah chapter 7 verse 8. Micah chapter 7 verse 8, that's the theme, that's the text for our theme of the month, I will arise. I will arise is the theme for this month, and this afternoon we are going to look at that text, but I want us to pray around what I have titled, Responding in Faith in Times Like This. Responding in Faith in Times Like This. Responding in Faith in Times Like This. Brothers and sisters, we are in very strange times we are in very unusual, uncommon times. Globally, every inch of the earth, every corner of the human race has been hit by the blow of this pandemic. Nobody can deny its effect or its impact 
we have all felt it. But I want you to know this afternoon that what makes the difference between winners and losers is that they have an understanding of what they cannot control and an understanding of what they can control. If you are going to be a winner in the midst of this adversity, then you must come to a place where you understand that there are things you cannot control, but there are things you can control. This afternoon, we're going to be praying around what I know that is in under our control. Because when you take charge of what is under your control, you commit God to take care of what is outside of your control. This pandemic, no one has an answer. There is, has not been found any answer yet. We are trusting God that the breakthrough will come very quickly. We are trusting God that the breakthrough will come speedily. But before then, the question I want to bring to us this afternoon is, how are you responding in this crisis? Micah chapter 7 verse 8 is our text this afternoon. Micah chapter 7 verse 8. Look at what Micah said. And please understand that when he was making this statement, the calamity had not befallen him. Like our pastor shared with us last week. The calamity had not befallen him. The crisis had not hit him. He hadn't fallen yet. Darkness had not overtaken him yet. But he had already prepared a response. Hallelujah. He had already prepared his response. That come what may, this is how I'm going to respond Come what may, this is going to be my position. That is the stance of somebody that is going to overcome in these last days. You don't wait for crisis to hit you before you now determine and work out how you are going to respond. No! Take counsel from Prophet Micah and make up your mind this afternoon that before anything happens, this is how I'm going to respond. Because people of God, whether you know it or not, whether I know it or not, every day we are responding one way or the other. Oh, we are responding, my brother. Look at what he says. He said, do not rejoice over me, my enemy. He said, when I fall, when I fall, connotes, like our pastor shared with us, connotes that I have not yet fallen. But per adventure, I even fall. This is how I'm going to respond. I will arise. Ah, you will arise. The enemy will not see your end in this pandemic. That sickness will not kill you. I said that disease will not take you out. I don't know who you are, where you are right now. But the power of the highest is hitting your family. And a new thing is springing out in the name of Jesus. He said, when I fall, I will arise. He said, when I sit in darkness, and that's not ordinary darkness. The Amplified Version, we read it last week. The Amplified Version says, when I sit in the darkness of distress. Darkness of distress. Thank you, sir. He said, do I fall, I will arise. He said, do I sit in the darkness of distress? This is going to be my response. The Lord is a light for me. Child of God, people of God, wherever you are this afternoon, I want to ask you, how are you responding to these times? How are you responding to these challenging times? Your response is so key in determining where you will end after this lockdown is all over. And that's why this afternoon I want to show you that the highest form of response that God is expecting from us, especially us as children, is a response of faith in a time like this. There are various ways people can respond to crisis. There are various ways people can respond to discouragement and despair. I was reading an article just some few uh, days ago that the, 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 the cases, the data of those who are, who are suffering from mental health issues across the earth, across the nations have skyrocketed. People are having serious problems of anxiety, depression, mental health issues. Some have gone into substance abuse even at this point in order to just look for a way of escape. That is a response, but that is not a correct response. You see, people, three things I want to share you because of our time. Three ways that men respond to crisis and respond to adversities and respond to trouble and respond to chaos and respond to challenges that face them. Three major ways out of many. Number one, you can respond with fear. You can respond with fear. The Bible tells me in Proverbs chapter 29 verse 5. Proverbs chapter 25, 29 verse 5 tells me that fear brings men into a snare. Fear is a response if you don't know. If you are afraid at this time, it's a response that you're already exhibiting. It's a response that you are showing, but it's not a correct response. The Bible says, a man, Proverbs 29, verse 25. Proverbs 29, verse 25. He said, a man's fear shall bring him into a snare. A man's fear 
shall bring him into what? Into a snare. People are responding with fear. It's showing in the way they talk. It's showing in the way they make comments. It's showing in the way they, 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 in the way they carry themselves in their, in, their, in their disposition at this time. People are some, some people have even, the people have even withdrawn completely from the outside world, thinking that the end of the world had come. Who told you that lie? Hallelujah. This gospel must be preached to the ends of the earth. Then the Savior will come. That's what the Bible says. And the scriptures cannot be broken. Don't respond in fear to this, to this crisis, to this pandemic, to the reports on CNN, to the reports on all the various news media. Don't respond in fear. In fact, I, I, said, I said people are just suffering from overdose, overdose of information. Many people are suffering from overdose of information. When you turn on this one, it's statistics. When you turn on that one, it's news here. Listen, there are times you just need to shut down all those things and go to where the right information lies for you. Don't respond in fear. Fear will bring you into what? Fear will bring you into torment. Fear will bring you into torment. First John chapter 4 verse 18 tells us that fear has torment. Many people are tormented by fear more than by the crisis and the impact of this pandemic. Fear is tormenting many. Many have lost their sleep. Many are suffering from insomnia. Many can't even... Many say, I was, somebody was calling me and said, I have not slept in days. I said, why? You are not, in, you are not a frontline worker. You are not an healthcare worker. So what do you want the doctors to be doing? You that you have been at home since March, locked up. You say you can't sleep. That's fear. Fear has torment. And worst part of it is Romans chapter 8, verse 19, verse 15. Romans 8, 15 tells me that fear puts people in bondage. Fear brings people in bondage. And that's what the enemy wants. That's what the enemy is, is desiring. That people will be put in the bondage of fear. But today, wherever you are listening to me from, wherever you are right now, every bondage of fear on your soul is broken. In the mighty name of Jesus. Look at Job chapter 3 verse 25. Job chapter 3 verse 25. If you stay in fear long enough, your fear will attract realities into your life. If you stay in fear long enough, the things you are afraid of will be attracted into your life, will be invited to your life. Fear will open a door into your, into your life for those things you are afraid of to come. Look at what Job said. Job said, for the thing I greatly feared, as what? Has come, has come, has come upon me. And what I dreaded has happened to me. That will never be your own story. In the mighty name of Jesus. What is my counsel this afternoon? Shut down fear. Shut it down. How do you shut it down? Bible says God has not what? God has not given us the spirit of what? Of fear. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. God has not given us. So if God has not given you, then who has given it to you? Whoever has given it to you, you can return it back. And this afternoon, lift up your right hand wherever you are and tell the Lord, and tell it before the Lord that every spirit of fear, I reject you over my soul. I reject you over my life. You will not bring me to torment. You will not bring me to a snare. You will not bring me to bondage in the name of Jesus. You will not open the door for the enemy to come and wreck havoc in my life. You spirit of fear, I break your hold over my life. I break your hold over my family in the name of Jesus. I have not received the spirit of fear. Today, I declare before the hearing of the law, I have received the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. People also can respond with discouragement. And we see it happening every day. Since, since the, this pandemic started, we've seen people responding with discouragement. Discouragement. People are discouraged. And I said, I said when discouragement hits a man, it gives him a new focus. When you allow discouragement to come into your life, it gives you a new focus. Discouragement will take your attention away from God and put it on other things. Take your attention away from the promise of God to you, put it on other things. When discouragement comes, it sets a new focus before you. And as you dwell on it, the thing begins to magnify. Because anything you dwell on magnifies in your life. Discouragement. People are responding to discouragement in these times. And it is a wrong response. Numbers chapter 21, verse 4 to 5. Numbers 21, verse 4 to 5 tells us, that the children of Israel were also discouraged at the time like this. And check out what their response was. The Bible says, and they journeyed from Mount Or by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the soul of the people became what? Became very what? Discouraged on the way. Just like many people are discouraged since this lockdown has started. Many have lost jobs. Unemployment rates have gone up. Businesses have shut down. Some have not even been able to open their offices since the month of April or since the month of March. So many things are so happening that is bringing discouragement and battering people on every side. 
But look at what verse 5 said. And this is what discouragement wants you to do. And you must avoid it. He said, in the, because their soul was so discouraged by the, because of the way. The Bible says the people did what? They opened their mouth and they spoke against what? They spoke against God. They spoke against Moses. Are we not seeing that on social media now? All manner of comments against the church, against the men of God, against God himself. If God was truly alive, should he have allowed this? Oh, you don't know anything yet. God is going to get glory over this matter. At the end of this pandemic, the name of the Lord is still going to be glorified. Because God will never allow anything that is not going to get glory over. He won't allow it. For him to have allowed it, something big is better. is coming out of it. Don't forget what our Father in the Lord said on Sunday. He said, John, Judges chapter 14, verse 14. He was, he was very silent about that prophecy. I, I, I pray that you have a hearing here. He was very silent about it. But I, he mentioned in Judges 14, 14. Is a prophecy for us as children of God at this time. Hear what he says. So he said to them, out of the eater came something to eat. Out of the eater. This pandemic is a eater. <laughs> this pandemic is eating, eating people up, eating their finances, eating their businesses, eating their jobs, eating their opportunities. But God is reassuring his own children that out of the eater, shall come something for his children to eat this year. And out of the strong shall come something sweet. So two things are coming your way this season. Something sweet and something that will produce supplies and provisions perpetually in your life. Hold on to that scripture. Out of the eater shall come something to eat. And people are already eating out of this crisis. I'm sure you know that. People are already making waves out of this crisis. New business opportunities are opening. New business uh, possibilities are opening. New doors are opening. People are becoming more creative. People are diversifying already. So out of the eater is coming something to eat. You will join the list of people that will have that testimony too. In the name of Jesus. Don't respond with discouragement. Number three, don't respond by murmuring at this time. It's a dangerous response. My murmuring is a response too. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10. This is the danger of murmuring. Oh, why is this happening? Oh, why me? Oh, why is this happening to us? Why is this? this, this? Listen, there is no nation that has not felt the heat of this pandemic. But do you know that certain nations are responding very well? And they're already putting this pandemic in check. There are nations on the earth right now that they have been able to put this spread, the spread of this pandemic to a minimal level. Look at what he says. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10. This is the danger of complaining and murmuring. He said, no, do not complain. As some of them also did what? Complain and were what? And were destroyed by the destroyer. In other words, complaining will open the door to destroyers. Don't respond by complaining. And lastly, don't respond by hopelessness. Don't respond. Hopelessness is a response. Hopelessness is just an attitude of nothing good can come out of this. Hopelessness will always look at the negative side of things. Hopelessness is the inability to see something better ahead of you. Don't give in to hopelessness. Don't give in to the response of hopelessness at this time. The Bible tells me that Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him was able to endure the cross and despise the shame. And today, he is seated at the right hand of the Father on high. I want to let you know that this, this season, God wants you and I to respond by faith. That is the correct scriptural kingdom response that God wants us to have. The same response that Micah had is what God wants you to have. The, I call it the response of faith. Responding with faith. What does it mean to respond with faith as we close this afternoon? It simply means to respond the way God would respond. Responding with faith means to respond the way God will respond. And if you want to know how God responds to crisis, just read Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 and 2 and verse 3. You will see how God responds to crisis. God does not describe problems. God declares his expectation. That is the response of faith. Stop describing what is happening to you. Start declaring what you want to see. There was chaos. There was emptiness. There was darkness. How did God respond? He showed us. He modeled it to us. And he responded by opening his mouth and declaring what he wanted to see. He said, let there be what? Let there be light. And what happened? Light came. Where did light come from? The Bible tells us that light came out of that same darkness. From that same issue 
of sorrow in your life. Your testimony of joy will arrive now. Your testimony of triumph will arise now. Out of that issue of embarrassment, out of that issue of shame, I see your testimony of glory arising from it in the mighty name of Jesus. What does it mean to respond with faith? It means to respond the, word, the way the word of God says you should respond. And that's why I close this afternoon so that we can pray. Respond the way the word of God has prescribed for us to respond. How do we respond in times like this? We respond by declaring the will of God. We respond by imposing the will of God. We respond by superimposing the will of God. And what is the will of God? The will of God is the word of God. Let the weak say, I am what? I am strong. That is a response of faith. I will not die but live to declare the works of the Lord. What is that? Response of faith. A thousand will fall by my side, ten thousand at my right hand, but none shall come near me. What is that? Response of faith. God will give his angels charge over me in this season to keep me where? In all my ways. They will bear me up in their hands lest I dash my feet against a stone. What is that? Response of faith. For this cause I bow my knees to the Father of, of, of light with whom there is no variableness nor shadow of turning because every good gift and every perfect gift cometh down from him. What is that? Response of faith. If God allows anything at all to come your way that is negative, be sure, child of God, is going to turn it around for a bigger testimony in the name of Jesus. I said this somewhere before. I said not all losses in life are real losses at the end of the day. Some losses are good so that God can use them to bat a new testimony and a new story in your life. I want us to rise up on our feet. We want to respond with faith now. I don't know where you are. I don't know what the condition of your life and your situation is right now. But I want you to respond with faith. And the response of faith is by speaking the word of God. Speaking the word of God. Speaking the word of God. How does God say we should respond? To lack. Say God shall supply what? All my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. That's the response of faith. Are you sick right now? Respond to that sickness and declare that this sickness is not unto death. No, this sickness is not unto death. Why? Because by his stripes I was healed. That's the response of faith. Are you facing a challenge, a battle, a spiritual attack? What's your response? Not fear, not discouragement, not hopelessness. What should be your response? The response of faith. What is the response of faith to challenges and attacks? No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you is already condemned. That is the response of it. Are people conspiring against you in your place of work right now? They want to put you out of that job. They want to put you out of that office. What should be your response? Not that of fear. Not that of anxiety. There's a word for them. Surely they will gather, but not by my God. For whosoever shall gather against me shall fall for my sake. That is the response of faith. Wherever you are right now, I want you to lift up your voice. I'm going to show you three scriptures that you are going to use as a response to what is happening right now. First is Job chapter 14, verse 14. Job chapter 14, 14. It's a response. It's a response of faith. Job 14, 14. He said, if a man dies, shall he live again? Are you still alive? Yes. Are you still alive? Yes. Are you still alive? Yes. All the days of my heart service will I wait. Till what? Till my change comes. You see, anything that comes, know that it is subject to change. Anything. Anything on this planet is subject to change. Anything that your physical five senses can relate to is subject to change. How do I know? He said, why we look not on the things that are seen, but on the things that are not seen. For the things that are seen are what? Are temporary. In other words, if you can see it, you can see it, you can touch it, you can feel it, you can smell it. It is subject to change. That situation is subject to change. Oh, I said that's, that report is subject to change. Can you see it? Can you handle it? Can you touch it? Can you feel it? You can read it. Anything that can be related to with your senses is subject to change. Lift up your voice. The first response of faith this hour is that we are going to declare that change is here. Not that your change is coming out. I want you to declare it. I say, Father, in the name of Jesus, my change is here. My change is here. I will arise and I will enter my new change. I will arise and I will enter my appointed change. Are you lifting up your voice and praying that prayer? All the days of my appointed time, will I what? Will I wait? For what? 
till my change come. Lift up your voice wherever you are. Anywhere you are right now in the nations of the earth, change is coming. Change is coming in the name of the Lord. Not by power, not by mind. Lift up your voice. That's the first response that you must have to adversity. That's the first response that you must have in times like this. When things are not going the way you plan, this should be your response of faith. That change is coming. Change is coming. God is a divine changer. Lift up your voice and say, Father, I bless you today because over my life, over my family, over my career, over my finances, over our nation, change is here. Change is here. Change is here. Change is here in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. I give you glory and praise. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. The second one is in Philippians chapter 1, verse 19. You must have this response in times like this. We are in trying times. We are in challenging times. We are in mind-boggling times. We are in perilous times. We are in desperate times. We are in depressing times. But we have a choice to respond correctly so that our outcome can be predetermined. Look at what it says. For I know. Uh -uh. For I know that this pandemic, this lockdown, will turn. Will turn out for what? For my deliverance. It will turn out for my salvation. It will turn out for my joy. It will turn out for my peace. Look at Luke 21 verse 15. Let me add it to that. Luke 21 verse 15. Luke 21 verse 15. Look at what Jesus himself said. Luke 21 verse 15. The book of Luke 21 verse 15. I think it's 15 or 13 where he said, this shall turn to you for a testimony. This shall turn to you for a testimony. Lift up your right hand wherever you are. I will find it very shortly. Lift up your voice and declare that whatever it is you are going to, God bless you, it's in verse 13. He said, but it will turn out for you as an occasion for what? For testimony. You will testify. Oh, you didn't hear what I'm talking about. That issue right now, that matter, that case, that problem, that trouble will be an occasion for a testimony. Will be a platform for you to testify of the faithfulness of God. Lift up your voice right now and declare that over your life. That in the name of Jesus, in spite of all that is happening, it shall turn out for an occasion for my testimony. It shall turn out for my salvation. He shall turn out for my deliverance. He shall turn out for my lifting. He shall turn out for my promotion. He shall turn out for my, my, my change. He shall turn out for my prosperity. In the name of Jesus, oh God. No matter what this season has brought against me, has brought against my nation, I declare the decree of the Lord today that it shall turn for our testimony. Child of God, don't be afraid. Don't despair. Don't be discouraged. Don't be hopeless. Respond with faith. It will turn to a testimony. Ah, I said that matter will turn to a testimony. That case will turn to a testimony. That fear in your heart, that concern of your children will turn to a testimony. Say the Lord of hosts. And finally, I want you to see this. Isaiah chapter 38. And I close with that. Isaiah 38. Maybe probably you're already sick right now. And all the symptoms are pointing to the fact that, oh, probably you have, been con you have contracted this virus. Or you know somebody that has been contracted, that has contracted this virus. Or somebody is already in the isolation center that you know. Even if you don't know them, I have a word from the Lord for them. This should be their response. Isaiah chapter 38 and verse 10. Isaiah 38 and verse 10. Look at what Ezekiah said when they brought the news that he was going to die and not live. Look at what he said to the God of heaven. He said, and I said in the prime of my life. I, I would like, I'll give me the King James Version. I like the King James Version. Put it in the King James. He said, I said in the cutting off of my days. That's what the virus is doing. Coronavirus is cutting off the days of people. Shortening the lives of people. The lifespan of people. Shortening it. Cutting it down. He said, this is what I said in the cutting off of my days. He said, shall I go to the gates of the grave? He said, why am I deprived of what? Of the residues, residue of my years. This guy was actually challenging God. That Lord, I know the full number. Why are you cheating me out of it? Why should coronavirus... Cheat me out of the number of the day. You can't be talking about residue if you don't know the total. It's like saying, I will give you 100 naira. And at the end of the day, I gave you 30 naira. 
You are now asking, where is the balance of 79? That's what he was asking. Now, where is the balance of the years you promised me? With long life, you will satisfy me. And you will show me your salvation. You said in your word that I will long enjoy the work of my hands. Wherever you are this afternoon, this is the response of faith. Anyone that is in a death situation right now, a terminal disease is in your body, is eating your cell system, is eating your organs, this should be your response. And I tell you, God will respond. God God responded to Ezekiah. He will respond to you. This is a prayer you are going to pray and declare. I say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I refuse to be deprived of the residue of my years. Are you praying that prayer? You, you, what you are saying in essence is that no sickness will take you out. No sickness will take you out. No disease will waste you. No premature death will, will take you before your time. Lord, I refuse. I refuse to God to be deprived of the residue of my years uh, over my children, over my spouse, over my loved ones. Uh, as many of your children across the nations of the earth uh, that have contracted this virus, uh, that are in isolation centers, that this, uh, this pandemic, this crisis, this, this virus is eating up their days, uh, cutting off their years. Uh, we stand in the gap for them this afternoon. And we say, Father, by the power in the blood of Jesus, uh, none of them shall be deprived uh, of the residue of their years. Uh, they are coming out of that, that isolation center. They are coming out of that infection. They are coming out of that death bed. They are coming out of that death bed. They are coming out of that bed of languishing. In the name of Jesus, wherever you are right now listening to this word from, you will not die in that condition. You will not die in that sickness. God will not deprive you of the residue of your years. Thank you mighty father. I give you glory. I give you praise. Thank you awesome God. Oh, I pray for everyone under the sound of his word this afternoon. Whatever Whatever is threatening your life right now, whatever is threatening every health challenge, every underlining, underlining health condition, size, threatening your well-being, your welfare, and your longevity on this earth, I came with the word of the Lord to you this afternoon. You will not be deprived of the residue of your years. The number of your days, God will fulfill it. In the name of Jesus. The number of the days of your children. That, that, that child that is on the bed, sick bed right now. I declare over him he is healed. I say he is healed. He is recovered. In the name of Jesus. No disease. No infection. No virus. Will deprive everyone of the residue of their years. You will fulfill your days. And you will glorify God when all of this lockdown is over. Thank you mighty father. That is the response of faith. It's a response with the word of God. Every time you respond to the, with the word of God, you are responding in faith. And faith is what God honors. And anywhere faith honors God, God honors faith. May God honor your faith in the name of Jesus. Have you been blessed this afternoon? Let's give our offering as we celebrate the faithfulness of our God. Don't forget, you are not in lack. You are not in lack. You are not in shortage. You have more than enough. If you only look well, you will see that God has made so much available to you in the name of Jesus. Any way of faith honors God, God honors faith. It's time for us to honor him again with our substance. And I see him honoring you back with supplies that you never bargain for. Things you are not looking for will begin to come your way. Or some things, by, that, by the way, will begin to come your way. Are we ready? Father, we thank you for the privilege to give. Wherever you are right now, in the nations of the earth, across the various platforms, wherever you are watching us on, online, as you raise that seed up to the Lord this afternoon, may he receive it from your hand. May he bless it. May he use it for his glory and use it for a way of escape for you in that very situation you have found yourself in the name of Jesus. May this offering become a seed connection for your destiny manifestation in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's give. If you are transferring your offering, the details of our accounts are on the screen. Please just ensure that you pick your phone now, pick your iPad, your tablet, and just make that transfer immediately. And God will bless you even as you do that in the name of Jesus. Choir, let's have a song.
our offering. Wherever your children have made their offerings from, Lord, I ask that you will bless them. I ask that financial favor will find and locate them in the name of Jesus. Bless our offerings, O God, on ground, online. Use it for your glory in the name of Jesus. Bless everyone at this time. And I pray again for anyone that has been isolated anywhere by reason of this virus. Lord, bring them out safe and sound in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Once again, we want to bless God, everyone online on ground. Thank you for joining us for the Holy Ghost Hour. The God of heaven will bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. Please ensure that you still ensure that you maintain social distancing. If you have to go out, wear your face mask. Keep yourself safe. You don't have to go out. Please stay home and just follow all the necessary directives that has been given to us. And very shortly, the God of heaven will intervene for us and put an end to this crisis. Tomorrow, by the special grace of God, our Father and the Lord will be coming uh, with the word of the Lord for us during our Bible study, the Digging Deep. It's at 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Please make sure you join us on all our various uh, platforms on the YouTube and Facebook via our radio platform. Please join us and God will bless you. Till I come your way again, by the special grace of God, please keep yourself safe and God keep you and your family. Let's share the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Now say that to yourself and say, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Go well and return better in Jesus' name.